Now to that breaking news overnight. Former Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens passing away on Tuesday at 99 years old. Our senior national correspondent Terry Moran, who covered the court while Stevens was on the bench, has a look at his life and legacy. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Robin. John Paul Stevens was considered a liberal in his later years, but he started out more on the conservative side. He liked to say he didn't move, the court did, but threw it all through this remarkable life in American law. John Paul Stevens was a brilliant jurist, a man whose kindness and courtesy helped set the tone up here for many years, and a deeply but quietly patriotic American. This morning, the nation is celebrating the life of retired Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens, who died in Fort Lauderdale after suffering a stroke on July 15th, was named to the court by President Gerald Ford back in 1975. Times were different. Stevens was confirmed by the Senate 98 to nothing. Can't imagine that kind of bipartisanship today. He was the third longest serving justice in our history, 35 years, up until 11 days before his 90th birthday in 2010. He was replaced by Elena Kagan. In a statement for the court, Chief Justice John Roberts says the retired justice brought to our bench an inimitable blend of kindness, humility, wisdom, and independence. When he got to the high court, Stevens sided with conservatives. By the time he left, he was considered a liberal firebrand. He was a World War II veteran and passionately opposed the idea that the First Amendment protects flag burning, and early on he found the death penalty constitutional. But he did change his mind on that, siding with liberal justices concluding that capital punishment is unconstitutional. Stevens spoke about his decision in a 2014 interview with George Stephanopoulos. You would define it basically as cruel and unusual punishment. Yes, I, w I would think the, f the sooner we get rid of the death penalty, the better it would be. He also became a reliably liberal vote on abortion, education, and the separation of church and state. He was fierce in dissent, never more than in his scathing dissent in Bush versus Gore in 2000. Stevens writing that he feared the decision in that case to stop the Florida recount would undermine the nation's confidence in the courts, an opinion he never let go of, writing in his memoir that came out earlier this year, I remain of the view that the court has not fully recovered from the damage it inflicted on itself. And overnight, the tributes are pouring in, the president and first lady sending their condolences in this statement, adding the retired justice was known for his humility, legal acumen, and affection for his beloved Chicago Cubs. His work over the course of nearly 35 years on the Supreme Court will continue to shape the legal framework of our nation for years to come. The Chicago Cubs posting to Twitter, honoring the Chicago native and Cubs fan. Is there one decision you're most proud of? I really don't know the answer because there are a lot of them that I am quite proud of and there are others I'm sure I could have done better on. All I can say is I did the best I could. Stevens was a man from another time. At a, as a boy, he met Amelia Earhart and saw Babe Ruth call his shot in the 1932 World Series against the Cubs. He was really a man uh, who was much beloved by his colleagues, and he will be missed up here. Such Robin. humility, too. Wow. I mean, he led such a full life, and he was even active after retirement, Terry. He really was. It was remarkable. He was playing doubles tennis up until a couple of years ago, hiring clerks every year through his 100th year. He won't be able to do that. But he also wrote a memoir this year, and he remained active publicly, calling for the repeal of the Second Amendment and criticizing President Trump. He never stopped right up until the end. Robin. All right, Terry, thank you very much. You know, Robin, you mentioned the justice's humility. He was a humble man. But in that question, he was responding, actually, to a letter that Gerald yeah. R. Ford, who appointed him, wrote, where he said this, I'm prepared to allow history's judgment of my term in office to rest, if necessary, exclusively on my nomination 30 years ago of Justice John Paul Stevens wow. to the Supreme Court. Yeah, that is he so was good. so proud of that. Mm -hmm. And rightfully so. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks, George. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.